What's up everyone, it's your boy Shog here coming to you with another episode of Marauders. I noticed that we just got up to 700 YouTube subscribers, so I'm pretty excited. Might as well do a little celebration by making another video for y'all. Today we're going to be revisiting the Hipfire Only series. We're going to be touching on some more stuff like the Mac 10, maybe with the attachments involved, an Uzi, Mini Thumper, Flamethrower, oh heck, and maybe a Clob or two. Let's get into it. Now the reason to revisit this is that Marauders has really started to embrace the Hipfire culture. I think a lot of the new updates and patches that they've made had balanced it out so that there is more of a movement shooter mentality to this game. While I do really like ADSing, you know, sometimes I like to give my middle finger a bit of a break. Sometimes we just need a bit of brainless PvP. Move around a bunch, be really hard to hit. It's kind of fun. And heck, you might even make somebody so mad that they might go into Marauder's Discord or Reddit and complain that the game has devolved into a COD shooter, requiring almost no skill to win a fight. And that's totally fine. Maybe I'm just doing 4D chess making this video so that the devs will see it and also nerf these these weapons and this playstyle. Just like as soon as I came out with my Mosin video, boom, no more one-shot headshots. The L1 is no longer in the meta. It's a, a bit of an obscurity, but it's still quite a strong weapon, don't get me wrong. Let's not forget AP Mines, no longer one-hit kill as well. You can't have any fun with that, pretty much. And who could forget the China Lake Grenade Launcher? Wow, was that quick. It used to be the best gun in the game, and now it is never seen. I never see that in Raid anymore. It is hot garbage. So if I were to be making this video as a psyop to try to nerf another weapon? Heck, maybe I should just straight up be endorsing the MAC-10 because right now it is the most insanely stupid brainless gun. You can kill so many people with it if you've got a silenced attachment on the barrel. Just nerf it already, okay? Before I finish this video, please just go ahead and nerf it so this video is well and truly obsolete by the time you finish watching this video. Please do it because it's changed the game to the point where now everybody's just chasing leaderboard by hip firing and being insane with the MAC-10 and it's kind of dumb. But also, my middle finger thanks you. That being said though, the devs are doing a great job of balancing the game. I'm not salty, I'm just having fun with this. Alright, let's get into it. First up is going to be the flamethrower. This thing has actually been buffed really nicely lately, you know, to a point where you would think a flamethrower would be in a close quarters looter shooter, similar to where the trench gun was before it was nerfed along with the terminator, which again, don't get me started, very sad that that has been nerfed. Not the terminator, don't get me wrong, terminator needed to be nerfed, but the trench gun being nerfed was is heartbreaking and I will forever be sad until they rebuff that weapon. Hashtag rebuff the trench gun. Okay, wow. I really got a lot off my chest there. I'm glad there's going to be a bit more levity to the show now. Now that we got all that administration work out of the way, let's start enjoying our Marauders gameplay. Oh, there's 100% players here. One of the best pieces of information I can give you about doing a hip fire only loadout is to not push a hallway like that. Since there's not much cover or area for you to move laterally, it's going to be super easy to just aim down the sights and blast your way as you're pushing them. There's going to be certain choke points and areas on maps that you just definitely don't want to be caught pushing. So try to find different angles. Hardly ever re-peek a certain area. If you find that they see you in a certain place, don't re-peek it. Unless you're going to be doing a huge jump across the doorway or looking down at the ground protecting your head from a normal level, chances 9 times out of 10 they're going to be aiming at that head level waiting for you to repeat that, which is just an opportunity for you to go and find a new angle because they're going to be scared looking at that one spot where they might not listen for or anticipate you flanking them like this. And while yeah, maybe they were able to hear me coming, but I'm starting to slowly pick away at their positioning, not fully engaging in a firefight, but slowly draining their ammo reserve, getting them unsettled, getting closer to an area where maybe I can do something that doesn't involve me taking a whole lot of damage. By beating their ADS time, I'm able to put them into a burning bloody mess. And that's the draw for using hip fire. You don't have to wait for your ADS to engage. You can start firing and landing shots almost immediately. Your movement speed is way stronger. You're harder to hit and you have the ability to do a lot of damage with very specific weapons that are attuned for that style of gunplay. And the flamethrower, surprising or not, has an insane amount of range. Not only that, but it is terrifying to be chased by one of these things, I'm sure. The flamethrower has a psychological edge over the DP any day. Better luck next time, bud. Again, we've got another scenario where I think twice about pushing an angle, especially because I've just taken a little bit of damage from a bot. It's always nice to make sure you've got 100% health, just in case. I don't want to leave it up to chance. I just want to roast some Timmies. Now, here's a good example of you ducking your head as you're rushing an opponent, just in case they're aiming at the head level, so you can protect yourself from those dangerous headshots. Oh my God. A little creme brulee, anyone? The flavor's amazing. 
OK? It's delicious. So, well done. All right, well, moving on from that poor little mishap, I think I hear somebody in high command. Really difficult place to push, especially with that explosive barrel right there. I don't know what gun he has yet, so I'm going to just try and bait it with a grenade thrower too. Maybe I can push the guy back so I can get a bit more cover, get up ahead, and get close enough to roast him with a flamethrower. Let's find out. All right, let's try and do a quick play-by-play -play on this. This doorway, I don't want to be standing in. I'm running in as quickly as possible. He surprises me by being right there, so I'm ducking my head as quickly as I can while moving left and then stopping and moving right to try to bait the shot for him to continue on moving his angle right, aiming and shooting that direction while I dodge and then light him on fire and win the firefight. Another standout part of the hip fire for flamethrower is that you basically blanket their whole screen with flames. So it's going to be really difficult for them to see where you are in general. I mean, it was even hard for me to know where that guy was. If he wasn't standing still shooting, I wouldn't have known that he was still there. The amount of damage that this thing puts out is actually pretty impressive. I gotta say, it really drops people quick. All right, one more flamethrower clip to send us home on this one. This is going to be a good example again of just using a lot of your left and right movements, especially in this wide open area, to dodge as many SVT shots as possible. Knowing that it only has 10 shots, hopefully, sometimes they're fully kitted, so they have way more shots than that. But the way this guy was shooting, I had a feeling he only had 10 and yeah, another toasted Timmy. And hey, if you're liking the video, don't forget to hit that like, subscribe, comment down in the section below, and hit that notification button for any time that I'm posting new videos. And hey, let me know what you guys think. If there's any new videos that you want me to hit up, don't be shy in letting me know. After this one, we'll probably do some videos on the Raider mode that they've just rolled out, as well as maybe some more map guides. And as always, I'm going to be streaming on Twitch at Shaka underscore Cthulhu. See y'all there, and thanks for the support. All right, next up is the Uzi with a metal stock rather than the wooden stock and a suppressor. No extended clip. Hopefully people are already fighting and I can just... Okay there. Hopefully I'm on the second floor. Same. Okay, so full disclosure with the 9mm caliber weapons, they're not going to hit nearly as hard as most other guns. So you really want to make sure that you have the silencer on there for that extra HP damage, as well as the extendo clip to make sure you're getting as much bang for your buck. What? Now in that scenario, almost died, I had to shoot pretty much to my last bullet with a non-extended clip Uzi. So just be really careful and don't do what I just did where I backpedaled rather than kept strafing around. I basically just made myself a standing target that was moving slowly away. So just be sure that you're always moving left and right rather than backward. That type of movement is going to actually diminish your hip fire accuracy. You're not going to get as close as well, which is important in a hip fire fight. Another important distinction is that the hip fire is going to be better with the metal stock Uzi which is found in the vaults rather than the wooden stock Uzi which you have to craft yourself. Another component of my game that I want to share with you guys is the sprinting peak. It's one of the best ways to figure out what kind of gun somebody has, where they're at, and how many of them there are. Yep. So in that quick instance I was able to gain a lot of information about the player without engaging and taking much damage and making sure that I'm not running into somebody with an MG42. Basically what I like to say is everybody's got an MG42 until proven innocent. 
Hashtag make the trench gun great again. Now in this scenario, I really don't want to be caught healing if he pushes me with a trench gun. When you're in the healing animation, you're very vulnerable. You don't really move that fast and you certainly can't shoot. But if you are in a healing animation and you want to get out of it because somebody's pushing you, just hold down the trigger finger and it will stop the animation and bring your gun back. Now the grenade here doesn't really help me, but I feel pretty confident that he doesn't have a strong secondary weapon. And if he does have a strong weapon, then I do have ample cover in this area. Now we're going to find out he has a para, which is relatively weak weapon and I've got that pole that's actually giving me pretty decent cover as I push him. I just got to be careful he doesn't pull out that trench gun and blow me away. Alright, so finding out that this gun is kind of viable, I decided to slap on the extendo clip which you can buy in the trader. You might have already noticed this before, but when I heal, I always throw down on a bit of aspirin as well. My usual is about four aspirin per game, just to be sure that I don't have any trauma on my heal bar, so I can always go back to 100. The shield probably saved me a little bit there, I'm not gonna lie. Pretty sure that guy shot my shield more than he shot me. Major shout out to having a shield on your back. Protection on your back is important as a solo. Where's this guy coming from? Damn, when I know I'm having trouble breathing, I usually like a good thump, like a little mini thump on the back, just to kind of clear my airways. So maybe we'll just give him a little mini thump. How about that? Don't worry, fella. Help is on the way. Uh, uh. Here comes a new challenger! Wow, we've got a lot of people playing with VoIP today. This is great. All right, so as you can tell, it's not the best for accuracy whenever you're hip firing, but the thumper is just so fun to quick peek and shoot. <laughs> and run away, and reset, reload, and try to catch them while they're hiding and healing. Fatality. Fatality. Help, I got bots chasing me, bro. Help. So I'm pretty surprised that the Uzi is viable against higher tier helmets and armor sets. It's still in the 9mm category, so I'm not 100% sold on them, but it definitely is still a viable weapon to use in a pinch. Okay, I'm pretty sure. See if we can kill him with an Uzi and then also pull out the glob. Do him dirty. So this is a good example of using your large first aid and having to stop it because the guy was pushing me. I did lose the large first aid. The animation continues on, but I'm not gaining any more heals from it. Uh, however, it did give me that extra boost right at the start before I actually canceled it out. In this next phase of attack, I decided to use a jump strafe. In the game right now, there isn't really a prohibitive mechanic. Whenever you jump, you don't have any problems with your hip fire. You do lose a bit of stamina, but it's definitely not enough to be prohibitive. It does slow down your mouse sensitivity while in the jump animation but the benefits of not being easily hit is definitely outweighing those drawbacks. Now I normally don't like jumping down in this instance I was basically at 75% health before I started shooting at him but luckily he had a pretty bad weapon so it turned out to be a pretty decent clip. Now if you're trying to run the club in any meaningful capacity you're probably going to want to bring a secondary club that you can switch out with the other one. Durability on these weapons goes very quickly and even with the Uzi or the MAC-10 you got to be really careful you're making sure to look at your durability from time to time to make sure that your gun doesn't break mid-fight.
One of the more viable hipfire weapons is definitely going to be the Mat 49. It's one of the first things you can buy from the trader at any meaningful level. So definitely keep an eye out for that when it does come up on the trader and maybe stock up if you're trying to do this type of strategy. While I would contend that the Mac 10 is a stronger weapon, especially with the barrel attachments, you can only find it in the vault if you're lucky. While the Mat 49, you can just buy it at the trader and it's always going to be there. You can stock up on a bunch of them. I would even try to run two just in case you do use the durability on one of the weapons. Weapons, you've got a secondary or you run out of ammo on one of them you can quickly reset and pull out the other one and finish the job all right so we're getting into the mac 10 now this is definitely the best hip fire gun in the game they are probably going to be nerfing it i'm more inclined to be using the silencer because it does give that extra damage buff but definitely the heavy barrel is still just as good especially if you're trying to do adsing with a bit of long range viability As you can see, the jump peeking is really overpowered at this point. There's really no prohibitive means to stop me from doing that and winning every battle. So anytime that I'm in that sort of range, maybe with a head full of spice or a bit of meth to try to diminish the stamina loss that you get from a jump, there's pretty much no drawback to doing that sort of strategy in a hip fire scenario. And then on top of that, you've got the MAC-10, which is an extremely strong weapon in itself. So if you can make your shots, just like I'm gonna be doing against these fully kitted guys, it's basically game over. As long as it's a 1v1, I pretty much win every fight. Now these guys were turtling inside of the vault area. I was trying to bait them out into the center tower, but I wasn't able to do that. I have a feeling that there's a guy just waiting at the door here to the right. I'm not really able to peek that with my jump shot because unfortunately the door is open. So a grenade would have been good there. Unfortunately, again, bank shot didn't go super well. So I just do the quick peek just to bait the shot, see what kind of weapon he has. Again, not a lot of lateral movement, so it was really easy for me to get shot there. Almost died, but luckily I was able to kind of push him back into the vault. Now, most vaults are actually pretty hard to defend. Terraformer actually has a bit of an exit route with the balcony out there. Now, I usually don't recommend to people to shut the door behind you. Unless you're trying to heal and turtle up, it's probably not a good idea, especially because it's really loud. People will know that you're down there, and it's really difficult to get out of that room once you do get put in there, and there's a good choke point. So it's just generally not a good idea to shut it, but if you do you get stuck in there or you're trying to attack somebody that's stuck in there use the cracks in the door to try to get a good angle opening and closing the door a little bit just to get those little pot shots in there to try and whittle them down and especially if you have a grenade a grenade is a good idea to try to destroy people inside all right one last jump strafe just to show how brainless this gun really is i didn't even get hit in this instance and then after that we'll probably just do a little bit of a uh, grenade fun to wrap things up battle right there. Dude, what happened? He had a Mac 10, that's why. I DP'd his life away. Yeah, his Mac Daddy won. I'll grab that Mac Daddy. Oh! Med bay, yeah. Uh, oh, somebody shooting in vault, maybe? That somebody else on our team shooting. That's not us. That's not us. Okay, so it's in, vo in vault area. I think. Okay, I'm coming up to Rick. Right now. Here now. That guy's kitted. Oh, that's not you. God, the bot was there taking shots. He tanked those. Oh yeah, he's full there. Okay, there's a fuck ton of people at vault. Oh yeah, we're gonna have to freaking go from the other side. There's no way in from where we're at. I got a, I got a viper though. I'm not with you. I'm on my way. Okay. Gotta push both sides. Your location is where? Left, left side. Left side. Yeah. Hibernator side is where we're at. Uh, oh. One in vault got me. Is an APS or something?
Grenade lob in time. <laughs> no, you didn't, dude. Let's go, dude. dude There's still two of them left. left. There's still two of them. Okay, watch out, watch out, watch out. They're, they're just watching it. Hold on, let me flash, then we'll go in. I got the uh, mini flash. Uh, they're flash, they're flash. Push, 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 push. Leroy Dragons! Why are you running with a melee, bro? I tried. I pulled out the mini thumper, but uh. <laughs> I almost got it. Yeah, that's a clip too. <laughs> you said charge him. Oh, I thought you had a gun. I thought we were doing this the. I thought we were doing this the Bray way. Sticky fingers. Uh, do I try and do it with the Baron gun, or just Viper them? They could pull too many thumpers off my body. That's one Ooh. thing. That's, uh... Yeah, I can't put down a mine. That's just gonna hobble me. Oh, he's in grenade ro range. Blech. Oh my god, dude. They're just letting me nade them. GG boys. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Let me know in the comments section below if you guys want to see anything else and we'll catch you on the next one. Ciao for now.